Welcome to our worship, shriv- worship service here at Abiding Love Lutheran Church. Uh, especially, I want to welcome our guests worshiping with us this morning. Um, uh, you can just see in your faces through the mass, I can tell just how rested you are because you had that extra hour of sleep, and so you're just energized to worship and to praise and celebrate your God, and so I'm glad you're here today. Um, as we celebrate a, a festival in the Lutheran Church called Reformation, um, and, and, and celebrate what God did for his church through his servant, Martin Luther, uh, 503 years ago. Um, and so we want to look at what, it, what, what are the blessings of the Reformation that you have for yourself today that you can live with and make a difference uh, for you. And so that's, that's the thought we're going we're gonna to focus on today. All right. I invite you to join the Path of Worship. It's printed in the worship folder that you received. Um, we'll... Uh, Begin on page three. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, amen. Uh, Please join with me in the responsive reading. This comes from one of the Lutheran confessions called the Augsburg Confession. We unanimously hold and teach that there is one divine essence, which is called and which is truly God. And that there are three persons in the one divine essence, equal in power and alike eternal. God the Father, God the Son, God the Holy Spirit. It is also taught among us that since the fall of Adam, all people who are born according to the course of nature are conceived and born in sin. Our churches also teach that people cannot be justified before God by their own strength, merits, or works, but are freely justified for Christ's sake through faith. When they believe, they are received into favor and that their sins are forgiven on account of Christ, who by his death made satisfaction for our sins. It is also taught among us that such faith should produce good fruits and good works and that we must do all such good works as God has commanded. But we should do them for God's sake and not place our trust in them as if thereby to merit favor before God. For we receive forgiveness of sin and righteousness through faith in Christ. The conscience cannot come to rest and peace through works, but only through faith. That is when it is assured and knows that for Christ's sake, it has a gracious God. We celebrate that we have a gracious God um, through his word alone. Uh, And so we sing about that in the words before us. Lord, keep us steadfast in your word.
The Holy Gospel is recorded for our learning on this Reformation Sunday in Matthew chapter 10, beginning at verse 16. Here Jesus says to you and me as his church and his believers that you and I should expect to um, face um, persecution and suffering, and, but that in spite of that, it shouldn't cause us to, to, um, uh, to keep us from testifying to our God, but those who continue to testify by his strength um, will enjoy eternity with him. I am sending you out like sheep among wolves. Therefore, be as shrewd as snakes and as innocent as doves. Be on your guard against men. They will hand you over to the local councils and flog you in their synagogues. On my account, you will be brought before governors and kings as witnesses to them and to the Gentiles. But when they arrest you, do not worry about what to say or how to say it. At that time, you will be given what to say. For it it will not be you speaking, but the spirit of your father speaking through you. Brother will betray brother to death, and a father his child. Children will rebel against their parents and have them put to death. All men will hate you because of me. But he who stands firm to the end will be saved. When you are persecuted in one place, flee to another. I tell you the truth. You will not finish going through the cities of Israel before the Son of Man comes. This is the gospel of the Lord. Praise be to you, O Christ. Our second lesson is written in Paul's second letter to Timothy in chapter 4, beginning at verse 9. Um, here he again reminds us that the ability to stand firm in our faith, to keep, continue to testify, only comes through the strength and power of our God uh, to do that. And that while we might feel so many times that we're alone in that you aren't alone because your God stands right beside you. Do your best to come to me quickly. For Demas, because he loved this world, has deserted me and has gone to Thessalonica. Crescens has gone to Galatia and Titus to Dalmatia. Only Luke is with me. Get Mark and bring him with you, because he is helpful to me in my ministry. I sent Tychicus to Ephesus. When you come, bring the cloak that I left with Carpus at Troas and my scrolls, especially the parchments. Alexander, the metal worker, did me a great deal of harm. The Lord will repay him for what he has done. You too should be on your guard against him because he strongly opposed our message. At my first defense, no one came to my support, but everyone deserted me. May it not be held against them. But the Lord stood at my side and gave me strength so that through me the message might be fully proclaimed and all the Gentiles might hear it. And I was delivered from the lion's mouth. The Lord will rescue me from every evil attack and will bring me safely to his heavenly kingdom. To him be glory forever and ever. Amen. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to you, O Lord. We... Um, confess our faith in that God and, and sing about him as our refuge and our fortress uh, to be able to confess our faith, to be um, like Paul in that sense. Um, so we use the words of, a, of, the, of the hymn Martin Luther wrote, A Mighty Fortress is Our God.
Grace, mercy, peace, and the ability to be still are yours this Reformation Day. From God our Father, and from our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, our refuge in, in the times of trouble. Amen. Uh, the portion of God's word we want to focus our attention on um, this morning is, is um, Psalm 46. It's printed on page 8 in your worship folder if you want to follow along. It's the, it's the portion of God's word that, that um, Luther used to, as the basis for writing the hymn we just sang, A Mighty Fortress is Our God. Okay? God is our refuge and strength, an ever-present help in trouble. Therefore, we will not fear. Though the earth give way and the mountains fall into the heart of the sea, though its waters roar and foam and the mountains quake with their surging, there is a river whose streams make glad the city of God, the holy place where the Most High dwells. God is within her. She will not fall. God will help her at break of day. Nations are in uproar. Kingdoms fall. He lifts his voice. The earth melts. The Lord Almighty is with us. The God of Jacob is our fortress. Be still and know that I am God. I will be exalted among the nations. I will be exalted in the earth. The Lord Almighty is with us. The God of Jacob is our fortress. This is the word of our God. My dear friends in Christ, fellow people who celebrate the Reformation. Um, today we celebrate the Reformation in the church, and if you grew up Lutheran, then maybe you've done that many times in your life. Or maybe if you're new to this whole Lutheran thing, um, this might be the first time you've ever celebrated. Whatever it is, we're glad that you're here. The Reformation is an important time in, in the church. It's the time when um, a, a Catholic um, monk named Martin Luther, on October 31st, in the year 1517, so 503 years ago, right? Before there was things like the internet, and blogs, before there were social media things like Facebook and Twitter and Instagram, Martin Luther took a hammer with some nails and nailed a piece of paper on the, on the door of the Catholic Church. And on that piece of paper, there were 95 theses, 95 sentences that challenged what the church was teaching about how a troubled soul could be still, could be calm and at rest. Not just as it lived in in. in troublesome and tumultuous times in the world, but, but especially to be still before God. The Reformation really is all about stillness and where you and I can find stillness for our souls. I guess the question for you and me today is, are you living with that kind of stillness? Or is your heart filled with trouble and tumult and worry and anxiety and uncertainty?
I wouldn't blame you if you were. Because I do too. But the amazing thing is, is that while (laughs) you might say to me, Pastor, I don't know how in the world we can be still (laughs) in what everything that we're going through. I mean, I know you were gone last week. Did you see that fire thing? If that doesn't cause trouble and tumult into your life, then, then I don't know what will. How in the world can you be still in the midst of those kinds of things? And I might even say to you, you know what? You're right. Being still seems impossible. And yet, I just read it for you. Did you catch it? God, the one who is the God of the universe, said to you and me, be still. So he must think there is a way for you and me to be still in the midst of all of this turmoil in in our lives and with him. Our God wants you to live with that kind of stillness. And so today, as we celebrate the Reformation, we want to know How in the world can you live with Reformation stillness? What does that look like? How does that happen? Because that's what God wants for you and me. And so that's what we're going to seek to do today. To understand living with Reformation stillness. Um, and, and, And God simply says to you and me, there's one key, one key thing. In being able to live with a still soul and heart. Did you catch what it was? It's understanding and knowing what your refuge is. So today, we want to seek to understand um, what is that refuge. First of all, we might understand what is a refuge? And what's the refuge that God says you can be still in, in the midst of all of that trouble and turmoil, so that you can live with that kind of stillness? That's what Luther discovered. And that's what you and I want to live with. All right? Um, um, God says to you and me, be still. And you and I can be still when you understand that God is our refuge and strength. Right? Right? You heard that. What's a refuge, first of all? What's a refuge? I suppose we might say it's a, it's a place of safety and a security, right? It's, it's a place that you can go where um, uh, you can feel like uh, nothing bad can happen to me. Um, some homes are, right, are built with like panic rooms, aren't they? And, and, and if you live back in the 60s and 50s and 60s, right, and you were afraid of nuclear missiles coming, maybe you built one of those bomb shelters. So you could go down there and go, well, I'm safe here. Well, what, what in the world is that safety and security or that refuge? Um, to help us maybe understand that a little more, I'm going to borrow an illustration from a book I read. Um, it's, it's the, the, it, the book is God is Here. Okay? And, and so um, here's, here's a picture. Maybe to help you and me understand this. Okay, I brought along a friend, my Reformation friend. You saw him before, up here. Um, this is my uh, little Reformation friend called Stillness. If you want to call him Still for short, that's fine. And, and uh, he's got other nicknames, if you want. You can call him Hope. You can call him Peace. You can call him Joy. You can call him content, Contentment. All of those things. He, he answers to any of those things. Because all of those things... <sighs> It brings stillness. Now, stillness, um, um, there, as we live in the world, there's a lot of things that try to hammer at stillness. Now, I'm not going to do it. Okay. 
but, but you know there are things that try to hammer the stillness, the peace, the joy, the comfort that we have in our lives. Can you think of some things? A fire comes to mind, right? Um, facing that. How about a pandemic? How about losing your job or, or the economy crashing or the Dow Jones going up and down and going crazy? How about knowing, are you going to school today or not? Or is it just going to be online? Will we ever see the inside of that thing again? Um, how about relationships with friends and family or in your marriage? Um, how about an election? Could that hammer at your stillness? Wondering what, who gets elected to what and what things are passed and how is that going to impact my future? And, and where things are going with our country, and, and can that hammer our stillness? I think so. How about, how about guilt and sin and death? Can that hammer at us? The thought of facing those things and wondering what's going to happen, all of those things can. And so if the hammer is going to be coming to pounce and to, and to club our, our stillness, what do you want to do with it? I want to protect it, don't I? I want to keep it safe. I want it to have a refuge. Now, would this do any good? If you got out your refuge and put them in here, would that help? It's a refuge. But if a hammer is coming on it, is this going to do any good? Not a single bit. Will it? You see, there are a lot of things in life that, that you and I try to use as refuge to hide ourselves in, to make us feel good, to, that we place our hope and our joy and contentment in that we think they'll be safe. We think a home can be a refuge, can it? You lock the doors and you're inside and you think you can be safe. No one can get in. The wind can howl outside. The storms can go. But we're safe. And then a roaring, out-of-control fire stands outside your door. Is your home safe? You and I know. A number of you had to leave your homes because people said, it's not safe. Many uh, uh, homes in the area up in the mountains, right, um, are no longer there because... It couldn't stop the fire. You and I don't just need a refuge. You need the right refuge if you want to have hearts that are still. And you and I are so tempted in this world to, to make things that are like plastic bags the refuge for our hearts that, that are going to cause stillness for us Maybe it's your health. If I have good health, then I can be still. Maybe it's wealth. As long as I have money, I can be still. Maybe it's my reputation. As long as I'm a, a good person and, I, uh, and people think good of me, uh, then I can be still. Maybe it's the right person being in office and living in the White House, then I can be still. But all of those things will not give lasting stillness, will they? 
or peace or joy. They may for a time, maybe for four years or eight, but it won't last forever. And as long as you and I that are temporary, things in this world that will not last, your refuge in your life, then what Jesus says here, what God says to you and me today is impossible. You will never be still. You will never be at peace. You will never live with, you won't be able to live with that kind of joy and contentment. That's what Luther understood and discovered for himself. You see, back in his day, um, he, he was troubled too. Only he was troubled about his relationship with God. And it wasn't just the things of this world that, and the events of this world that were hammering on him. Um, he thought God was the one who was the hammer. You see, he learned to see God as the angry judge, the holy and righteous judge who demanded perfection from him. And so anything that bad happened to him, it was God pounding on his stillness, his peace, his joy, and his comfort. And so he tried to find a way to hide himself. To, be a, to find a refuge. And in the church, he had learned that the, that the way to be safe from God's anger is judgment is to live a good life, to do the best I can, to obey the commandments, and then, and then I'll be okay. But you know what? It was just like this plastic bag. It didn't work because it just pounded on his conscience that it wasn't, that he wasn't right with his God and he hadn't done enough. And no matter how much he beat himself, it just it didn't work. He even um, thought that by doing all of the right rituals, all of the traditions that, that the church gave, that that would protect him and, and appease his conscience and, and allow him to be still, but that didn't work either. And then he learned that the church was, was selling pieces of paper for members, that if they bought this piece of paper, they, back in the day they called it an indulgence. Have you ever heard of that? That if they had this piece of paper, then, then that would release them from, from a time of suffering for what they had done wrong, and they could have peace and stillness in the piece of paper. And, and Luther said, that ain't it either. That's just one of these plastic bags. No. He wanted you and me to understand what's the refuge. Psalm 46 taught him what the refuge is. He said, be still and know that I am God. God is the refuge. Not you, not me, because we're not. No matter how much we try to be protected and, and secure, only God is able to do that. God is bigger than all those things. God is our refuge and strength, he says. Okay? So, let's take a look here. that over here. No, this won't be our refuge, but what happens if I take my stillness, my hope, my peace, my comfort, my contentment, and I put it in this safe? And now, when all of those things in the world are pounding on it,
Do all of those things hurt my stillness? Can they touch my stillness? Can they touch my joy, my peace, my contentment? Can they? Not one bit. Not if you have the right refuge. Luther learned what you and I want to learn, what you and I want to live with, and that is that God is our refuge. Not, not just a little God, but the big God. The God who is the almighty God, the one who is in control of all things, the one who has all power, the God who knows all things, who already knows how things are going to go in your life, who already knows how the election is all going to turn out and, and, and what it's going to do. He, he's the one who knows how to take the bad things that happen in our lives and make it work for our good. He knows it. He has the power to do it. That's the God who is your refuge. He's the eternal one. He is the one that nothing that happens in our world could ever touch or destroy. You see, Luther came to understand that, that instead of being afraid of God and running away from God and hiding from him, that God was his refuge because of Jesus. See, the Lord Almighty is with us, he believed. And he is with us because he sent Jesus to be with us. Our Emmanuel, then he. That's what we're going to celebrate in a couple of months at Christmas time, right? He is with us. That he sent Jesus not to come and hammer us. He could have, couldn't have he? And he had every right to, to pound on us for not living the way he wanted us to. Not trusting him. Not believing in him. Not being still and trusting his word, but he didn't. Instead, he sent Jesus to be our refuge. To take our place so that God's anger and justice could pound on him on a cross. So that his, the hammer of God's justice could pound nails into his hands and feet for all the times that we failed to trust him. That, he, that the hammer of God's justice would pound the crown of thorns into, our, into, into his head for all the times we failed to, to think and, and, and remember who our God is and see how big of a God he is and think he's such a little God instead. And when Jesus cried out from the cross that for God to be his refuge, you know what God did? Nothing. He let him be pounded and experience what it's like not to have God as your refuge. And he endured hell. And he did that so that God could be your refuge. So that when you cry out in the midst of your troubles, God would be a refuge for you. That he would say, here, come, hide in here, in me. I will protect you. I will be your God. I will be your strength. You know how much strength I have? I have so much strength that I'm able to rise from the dead and conquer Satan and death for you so that you don't even have to be afraid of them. See, that's what, that's what Luther realized. Yeah, God is angry and just, but he's also a God of grace and mercy. And that makes him our refuge. The place that we can run to, there is no other refuge that will bring the stillness that you and I long for, the peace, the joy, <laughs> the contentment, all of those things. It's all in the right refuge, and that is in our God. And there it is. He's safe. 
and so are you. Through faith in Jesus, it's saying, God, you are my refuge. I'm going to run and hide myself in you. I know there's turmoil and everything around me, but, but I'm safe in you. Did you, did, you, did you see how the psalmist put that? You see, when you understand what the refuge is, um, um, everything else, the earth and everything else around you can be falling apart. The mountains, I'm, I'm assuming they're still beautiful out there. They might be on fire, but they're still up there. Can you imagine the mountains just collapsing and falling into the sea? And, and what turmoil that would be? Everything else in the world can be falling apart. Kingdoms can fall. Did you see that? Right? Nations come and go. Elected officials can come and go. They do not last. But did you notice what your God says to you? Notice what he says in verse 4. There is a river, his word promises, whose streams make glad the city of God. The city of God is his church. It's his church on earth. It's his church, especially in heaven. The holy place where the Most High dwells, uh, the city of God is you. It's, it's you as a believer in Jesus. It's, it's the place where God lives. And so God is within her, and so she, no, did you notice? She will not fall. No matter what happens in our world, no matter, no matter any of those things, no matter what tries to pound and destroy your stillness and your peace and your comfort and your joy, Satan himself cannot touch it because God is within her. God is the one who protects you. You can't fall. It may touch your life. You may die, but it can't touch your soul. You'll live with him forever. This is promise. Luther lived with that kind of, of Reformation stillness. When he understood that he had stillness with his God, that, that God wasn't angry with him, but that he had forgiven him, and, and, and he could hide in him, and so that he could be still even, even then when everything else around him was, was in turmoil. Can you imagine what it was like to stand before the emperor and have to testify? Can you imagine what it was like to stand before, before the pope and the, all of the elected officials, the, the rulers of the church that wanted to put him to death? Why could he stand and be fearless? Because he knew God was his refuge and strength. He, you hear it in the hymn. Do you remember it? Listen to the third stanza. Though devils all the world should fill, all eager to devour us, we tremble not. We fear no ill. They shall not overpower us. This world's prince may still scowl, fear says he will. He can harm us none. He's judged. The deed is done. One little word, Jesus, can fail him. <laughs> That's what it's like when you live with Reformation stillness. God says, you don't have to be afraid of those things. I know they're scary, but you don't have to live with fear. You see, fear, fear looks at things and says, if, I, if, if this goes away, if this happens, then, then I'm going to lose this, right? If this fire happens, I may lose my house. And that may be true. I can lose temporary blessings. But if, if the pandemic happens, will you lose your God? If, if a fire happens, will you lose your God? Never. can never take it away. And so that's why our God says to you and me, find your stillness in me. How do you do that? You do that through his word. It's in his word, that river that flows to you and me, the river of life, as you and I live in the words and promises of our God and see what he says to you and me that even in the midst of the troubles, I won't ever leave you or forsake you. 
that, that I'm gonna make all things work together for good. It says I live in his word. He, he brings me, he makes me still. He invites you to hide in, in your baptism. To, to know that, yeah, you may have blown it, but I've forgiven you. He covers you in the righteousness of Christ so that, so that you can be at peace. That this is your refuge and nothing can touch you. And pluck you out of his hand. He invites you to hide himself in the body and blood of his supper and, and taste the security, the safety that is yours because you're, of what Christ has done for you. And to know that you are safe with him, not just now, but for eternity. That's where you find it. <laughs> That's living in a safe and secure place with your God. There you can be still. There you can live with Reformation stillness. Um, um, you and I know that too, I think. I learned it even as a kid. I learned it at church, but my mom read it to me in a fairy tale. Um, you ever hear of the three little pigs? Right? They learned about refuges, right? There were three refuges. Remember what those were? Um, there was the, the house of straw, house of sticks, and house of bricks, right? And, um, um, uh, and they thought the straw and the sticks, they were good, but then the wolf comes along, right? And he huffs and puffs, and, and that, <laughs> uh, the, that shelter, that, that refuge didn't last, did it? But when they came to the house of bricks and they all ran there, right? And then the wolf stood outside and he huffed and puffed. And what happened? Ah, it did blow down. And so they could be still. And when the wolf tried to get in, and he gets boiled in. Uh, I don't know how that applies to God's word today, but that's all right. You get the idea, right? They were safe. They were secure because they had the right refuge. And when you have God as your refuge, then you can do what the little pigs did. Do you remember what the little pigs did? when they were safe and secure, then they, could, then they could hop and sing around, couldn't they? Who's afraid of the big bad wolf? Big bad wolf. No, 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 right? You can live that kind of fearless life when you understand who your refuge is and that you aren't it and that God is so that you can live at peace peace and security. So that, as Luther even said, right, they can take, um, I don't know the new words, I like the old words better, right? Take they our life, remember that? Goods, fame, child, wife, let these all be gone. They yet have nothing won. The kingdom ours remaineth. You might lose all of those temporary blessings in your life, but it can't take away your stillness, your peace, your hope and joy when you, when you hide it in your God. And there may be times, my friends, that God will knock down blessings in your life that you've made your refuge. Maybe it'll be your health. Maybe it'll be your wealth. Maybe it'll be the person living in, in the in the White House. Maybe it'll be um, 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 other things that happen. Just so that you might look and see, am I still, still, to reveal to you and me, where is your refuge? Where is your stillness? It is, in, is it in the things of this world or in the one who created it? God, when God is our refuge and he is our strength, then, my friends, you can live with Reformation stillness. Not just now, but forever. Amen.
We get to celebrate the, the refuge who our God is through the words of a song um, that we're going to sing instead of confessing our faith using the Apostles' Creed. We're going to use the song, We All Believe. It's printed on page 9 in your worship folder. with your refuge God, then you might, uh, you can use the offering box all in the entryway or you can do that um, online as well. We have the privilege of coming into the presence of our God and sharing with him the troubles of our heart and he hears us and lets us know he is our refuge. And so um, we join in uh, the prayer of the church as it's printed there. We'll include a prayer of, um, on behalf of Scott Alquist as he mourns the, uh, the death of his father and then also a prayer um, as we face uh, the election. We go to our God. Please stand. Eternal Lord, you speak to us in words of love and light and power. Fill us with peace today as we ponder the good news that you forgive our sins in Christ. Give our lives today as, uh, guide our lives today as we see clearly the path you laid out for us. Work in us today through your spirit that our thoughts, words, and actions glorify you and serve our neighbor. Amen. 
Fill us with the word we have heard today and move us to believe it and live it. Provide courage and compassion to all who preach and teach your word. Take away their fear of criticism and contention and make them bold to say what you say. Fill them with a love like yours and lead them to announce the forgiveness of sins as your free gift to us and all people. Move us to love all ministers of the word wherever they serve. Forgive us for the times we hear your word but fail to live it in our lives. Break down the apathy that lurks in us and leads us to ignore eternal realities. Convict us with your law and then fill us so full of your gospel that we overflow with zeal to do your will. Give us thankful hearts to live with love and joy. Guard, guard and guide us as we live in a society that despises what you say about marriage. Lead husbands and wives to love each other with commitment, respect, and patience. Move parents to grasp the eternal value of keeping their children close to Jesus, even when their children grow up. Protect us from the evil that surrounds us. Give us pure hearts and minds. Provide your divine compass for those who govern us by making laws and setting policies. Give us respect for those who protect us from crime and aggression. And lead us to value the rights of our fellow citizens and to care for those who cannot care for themselves. Bless our land with peace and prosperity so that the gospel may be proclaimed to all. Give us passion to share the story of your love with our family and friends. Overcome unbelief and open the hearts of people everywhere to believe the good news that Jesus has forgiven their sins and open the gates of heaven. Fill us with joy over every sinner who repents and comes to trust in your grace. Extend your healing power to those who are sick and suffering in body and mind. Today we ask that you would pour out your special blessing on, on Scott uh, and, and his family as they mourn uh, the death of his father. Um, assure them of your loving presence. Calm their hearts with the hope of the resurrection, that, they, that through faith they might see you, see him again. Um, calm their hearts and dry their tears as, as they find hope in their grief through your promises. And Lord, um, you are the Lord of the nations. You have made us citizens both of your kingdom of grace and of the earthly nation in which we live. You have placed us under a government that gives us the privilege of choosing the leaders who govern us. As, as another election approaches, help us appreciate and use this privilege Bless our nation through this election of honest and responsible officials and watch over us each day with your almighty protection and your unfailing love. And fill eager minds with wisdom and discover, to discover new ways to treat disease and illness. Give patience and compassion to those who, are, who care for the sick and dying. Lift the eyes of the dying to your love in Christ. Hear us, Lord, as we pray in silence. Eternal Lord, you guide the world with your mighty power and love all people because your Son lived and died and rose again. Hear our prayers, spoken and in silence, and answer them in your wisdom and grace. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. We join together in the Lord's Prayer. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. And forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. Receive the blessing of your God of refuge. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine on you, be gracious to you. The Lord look on you with favor and give you peace. Amen. You may be seated. Good morning. Glad that you could all join us for worship this morning, especially our guests worshiping with us. Privileged to share uh, Jesus as your refuge with you today. I um, want to thank Crystal for playing. Appreciate her using her gifts. Um, just a, um, uh, an opportunity or just to remind you of some things coming up uh, this week. Um, 
um, um, to be to be rejoiced that uh, Sugar Valley, um, that uh, independent living center, um, they said I could go back and start doing church again. So I'm going to be doing that this week. Hopefully things will stay so I can keep doing that. But but offer a prayer of thanks um, to God uh, for that. Um, if you missed Sunday Bible class, I want to go through it. Um, you can do that on a Zoom. Um, that'll come out um, this this week. Or if you want, you can email me and I'll send it to you. Um, our audio visual, um, new audio visual stuff is, should be coming uh, this week and being installed, correct? And so um, we're looking for people to run that. Um, and so I think we have about seven people. We'd like to have eight or more. So if you want to find a way, it should be a simple way to, uh, I think he said I could even run it. So I'm assuming that means uh, just about anyone can do that. Um, um, so if you're able to, Saturday morning we're going to have a little training session um, with him. And so um, let Kim know so we can make sure we have all, all those things prepared. Um, and if you can't make it but still want to in the future, then just let me know. Um, we can take care of that. All right. Um, you're going to find a couple things out in the entryway. One is if you haven't signed up for and taken that survey about Christmas, please do so. Because otherwise the worship team has to call you. You're not going to get away with it. Okay, so, so either you do it or we've got to call you. So, and if you want to talk to us, that's fine. They're happy to talk to you. But so, so either do that online or fill that out in the entryway. Um, second thing, um, uh, next week is uh, Veterans Day. And part of what we do in, in um, celebrating our veterans is, is helping those who maybe are struggling. And so there's a Lutheran military support group. There's, you'll see an offering, special offering box out on the table back there. Well, for the next three Sundays, we'll be taking that. And so, so if you want to do that, you can do that as well. Um, if you want to support the youth and you want a calendar of 2021, because you want a new calendar, um, you can do that. Those are in the, on the back, back table by the cards. Um, those are, there are cards there. If you want a unique card, um, you, can, you can take one. They're, those are just donations. So for those. All right? Great. May God bless you with a still week.